But what I wanted to do is give you guys a bit of an overview about what we're trying to do with Radix and the technology we're creating. So why are we building? Um, one of the things that I think all of the people who helped create the Radix technology, all of the people who've who have been part of the Radix journey believe is that our finance is letting us down in a thousand different ways. And a lot of those are small. Like, it just sucks a bit to send money internationally. It just sucks a bit to buy stocks and shares. It just sucks a bit to not have access to different financial products depending on where you are in the world. It just sucks a bit that you have to pay brokerage fees. It just sucks a bit that it takes a month to get one payment into a pension scheme. Like all of these things collectively create an experience in our lives that we're not used to, which is things that just don't feel very user-friendly. Like everything else with the web and with the modern tech stacks have got better, but finance sort of just hasn't. Um, so our vision, what, we, what we're building towards, what we're hoping to achieve um, is a radically better financial system. And we think that that's something that is achievable, but it's only been achievable with this new technology that's come along, like blockchain infrastructure and the ability to think global first, rather than what we have at the moment, which is these badly interconnected archipelagos of little islands where each little company, like the London Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange, has decided its own way of implementing and made something that's fundamentally incompatible with everything else. So. What's that going to look like? We, we believe, the reason we build and we believe what we're building towards is that decentralized finance is going to eat traditional finance. And the reason we believe that is because it's just a fundamentally better way of making finance work together. So um, if, you, if you think of what the internet is and Matt covered this in his presentation, but DeFi is finance built for the internet age. It's suddenly this way of being able to say, well, if I bought, built a financial product and you've built a financial product and I've got a customer base and you've got a customer base, suddenly those are shared. If you've got some assets over here, they can move instantaneously to something over there. And you don't have to have permission to build in this infrastructure. Previously, if you wanted to build against a financial product, if you wanted to build against PayPal or Stripe or any of these things, you have to go through this process of onboarding. Whereas in this world, you can do everything. There is the, there is the possibility inside this technology to do everything that traditional finance does today, but faster, cheaper, and more efficiently. However, there's still a long way to go, right? We're in the very early phases of this, and I'll show you quite how early we are. But when it, will, when it happens, and it will, we do think um, and hope that billions of people will be better off. Because it's not just, like, people often talk about, like, banking the unbanked, but a lot of this is, I think, is wider than that. It's about providing people the tools to be able to have um, what, it, what they need for their savings, for their investments, for their future selves. And at the moment, those things are all incredibly hard to access. Like even if you are, live in a Western world and you have the ability to sort of like get a stocks and shares account, they are not accessible. They're not accessible things. They, um, and most people don't invest like that. So it's not just about, not just about giving access to everyone, but it's about lowering the barrier to injury and creating better products that makes it possible for people to have better financial experiences. Cool, so how are we gonna make sure that happens? Um, again, this is something that Matt will have said. So like our mission, the thing that RDX states that we're uh, doing, um, is to give builders everything they need to obsolete traditional finance. This is how we see it possible to actually make our vision possible. But like what that actually really means is our mission is to empower you. Like, we're not going to build all of these future financial products. That's, that's not our job. Our job is to create the infrastructure that makes it possible to be a, uh, a leaping off point for the success of others. And it really comes down to what the community can imagine, what you guys can imagine is possible now you're given this new set of tools. Like, what could you actually build? And so what we are always trying to do is go, how can we keep that barrier to entry as low as possible? How can we keep making it possible for people with a great idea to go on and build something amazing? Now, quite how early we are. Like, right now, DeFi is 200 billion or 0.2 trillion. Um, that's a dot you can't actually see. 
Um, DeFi 100x from now is 20 trillion, but the global financial system as it is now is 400 trillion. But that's only with about 13 to 20% of the total assets of the world actually represented in it properly. Like, what happens when the metaverse comes along on Web3? What happens when you actually open up finance to the point where, you know, large parts of the African subcontinent can get involved in finance? That's going to be a much bigger number again, but all of that has to be opened up by new technology. So what's happening right now is this really interesting thing. Like, we see these public ledgers as like a two-sided marketplace, right? On one side, you have capital. On the other side, you have dApps. And capital has found ways to flow into this space incredibly quickly. It's 220 x in 24 months. So it's gone from $1 billion under management, DeFi, 24 months ago, to $220 billion today. It's 220 x in two years. Developers have 2 x That's 19,000 full-time Web3 developers today. And that's not because a lot of people haven't tried it. Lots of people have tried it. A lot of people, about half a million people, have tried programming with Solidity. But only 19,000 people are building. And that's actually not because there aren't jobs. Like, there are jobs. There are very high salaries available. It's because of how insanely hard it is to actually build production-grade DeFi today. And right now, one developer, if you divide 220 billion by 19,000, one developer is worth about $11.5 million in total value locked, meaning that there is about $11.5 million of capital looking for the next opportunity per developer in the space. So not only is it incredibly early, there is also a deficit of talent in the space. And we hope, we believe, what we've built means that that problem with talent being able to access, being able to build amazing things, has been radically reduced as a barrier with Scripto. So why should you build and what should you build? These are, these are interesting questions. The first, I would like to tell a story about Hayden Adams. Actually, show of hands, how many people know who Hayden Adams is? That's really interesting. Two people. How many people know what Uniswap is? Hands up. Okay. So Hayden Adams is the founder of Uniswap. So in July, July 6th, 2017, Hayden Adams was laid off from his job in Siemens as a mechanical engineer. He uh, was not a programmer, had never programmed before in his life. But at that point, one of his friends said, hey, you should try to learn Solidity, this is a great opportunity for you. You should try to learn Solidity. So from July to October 2017, he didn't go into, didn't go into the Ethereum community going, I'm going to build Uniswap. He just went, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to see what this is all about. I'm going to play around with the tools, and I'm going to teach myself how to become competent enough to build something. And he spent a lot of time in the community. He hung out on the forums. He went to meetups. He went to the developer events. Uh, he met some great people. He got some great feedback. And in October to November, so a two-month period, he wrote Uniswap v v0, which is a which was the proof of concept. Now, didn't actually do anything apart from allowed you to swap from Ethereum uh, to the Uniswap token and back. And and it really didn't wasn't actually launched. It was just showing what was possible. And this is what it looked like, um, which, you know, he, he knew was, was, was janky and weird, but it did the job of proving to him that he could actually get to the point of building an application. And my God, is Uniswap a simple application at base? In terms of the number of lines of code, it's very, very, very simple. Now, November 2017 to November 2018, one year, he went to Uniswap v1, production ready. And this is actually the side note of exactly why Scripto is important. Like, someone was able to get to a proof of concept in two months and then spend the next two, next one year smashing his head against a wall trying to work out how to make this code work, how to make it secure, how to make sure that it didn't get hacked. And he ended up refactoring it five or six times during this period before he actually got to Uniswap v1. And this is, this is the problem. Like Solidity, you can get to a concept easily, but getting to production code is incredibly difficult. November 2018, he launched 
$34,000 came into it. One year later, it was at $20 million, total value locked, 588 times more. Another year later, it was $3 billion, 150 times more. And then the year after that, $10 billion, another 3x. So what are the lessons I take away from this? There's three. First is, a person with no coding experience can build something incredible. We are this early in this industry at this time that everything is greenfield. Everything is just an opportunity. And actually, the things that's strongest right now are the ideas rather than the, you know, building something of an incredibly complex user interface, incredibly complex user experience. Actually, capital in the space and users in the space are incredibly forgiving versus almost any other area where we have become used to, as consumers, polished user experiences that don't, if they don't instantaneously gratify us, we just leave to the next application because it's there. In crypto, because the opportunity is so large and because the number of people actually building great things is so small, a small amount of code and a big idea goes an incredibly long way. The second thing is getting, getting started by learning is the first step. Like Hayden didn't know what he was going to do when he first got started. All he did is he was like, there's a cool community here. I'm going to go hang out and I'm going to learn how to use these tools. It wasn't, I'm going to build Uniswap, I know what the next billion dollar idea is. It was that learning by doing was the way in which he saw what was the opportunity could be. And the third thing is something to sort of think about is the, the founder of the first $10 billion app on Radix might be in this room. Like, this is how early all of those opportunities are. And that's not me saying, hey, this is a competition. Who's going to be first? It's me saying there is so much opportunity here in terms of the headroom that's available for decentralized finance to eat traditional finance for us to reinvent what's possible with financial applications that every single person in here could build a $10 billion application and you still wouldn't be taking business from each other. So to end with a cliche, <laughs> The journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Really is just what you are doing now is you've taken the first hard step of learning the tools, getting started, t showing up, and starting to play with this stuff. But like a lot of people feel like there's a big abstraction between what what you do today, what I do today with like a simple code application like a gumball machine and building something that can actually control $10 billion of total value locked, but it's actually not that far. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming, uh, and I hope that today inspires you to take the first step on your journey. Thank you.